So today we're going to look at equity valuation. Uh, I prepared a spreadsheet. We have it right here. This is uh, the six, seven methods of equity valuation. We have zero growth, constant growth, variable growth, free cash flow, book value per share, liquidation value, and PE analysis. So we look at the first one, which is zero growth. If you had to find the dividend is three dollars, and our required rate of return is fifteen percent, which is the return that we would normally look for if, uh, depending on the capital asset pricing model, which is a video that I'll do in the future. But let's assume that that's the rate of return that we require given the risk we're taking in this investment. So if that's the case, it's a simple. And again, we'll talk more about how we derive required rate of return in later videos. But if that's the case, then using a zero growth valuation, we simply need to divide the dividend of the expected zero growth dividend, which isn't going to grow. That's our assumption. By the required rate of return, then we're going to get 20. Or if you want to look at it another way, if you earn 15% on $20, there's your dividend. So that's how you get a zero growth valuation if you want to use a dividend model. Obviously, this works with dividend paying stocks. If not, then you have to use more of a cash flow model. We'll get into that in a minute. Now we have constant growth. So we're assuming that we start at 15%. That's our required rate of return. But that the company is going to go at 7%. So if that's the case, then you just need to make a simple adjustment. You subtract required, the growth rate by, from the required rate of return and divide by the dividend. So in this case, you would divide $1.50. That 15%. Take away the 7% because that's how it should grow. And then at that point, you're only really dividing 15 by a smaller number, which you're getting growth. And on a dollar fifty dividend note, you're almost getting the same value as you got on a three dollar dividend, which could justify a much higher rate of return because you're actually growing the earnings as opposed to just staying stagnant. So again, a lot of this is theoretical, but there's another way to view the equity valuation model using a dividend paying stock. This gives you a start to see how to look at cash flow and a function of cash flow in terms of looking at equity investments. The next one is if we look at a variable growth model. And here we have a dividend of $1.50. We're going to increase it 10% into year three and then we're going to say it remains constant at 5% thereafter. So if we look at this box here, you take year one, you take the original dividend and grow it at 10%. You get these three numbers, growing at 10% every year. You could do that by using a future value function, plugging in these numbers using 10%. Okay, 10% is our growth rate. And then we just discount it. Uh, we discount it at 15% since that's our growth rate. We'll come up with three different numbers, and we're going to come up with a present value of these cash flows, discounted of our growth rate. And in year three, we're going to have a two dollar and ten cent dividend if we keep growing at ten percent. Now, if we take that 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 year three dividend, and we divide by, since now we have constant growth, we divide by the fifteen percent required rate of return minus the growth rate of five percent, much like this up here. And we'll come up with a final value of 21. Now, if I take the present value of that today, and you plug me in a present value function, and using my 15% growth rate, I'm going to get 13.78. Add in my dividends, and now I've got, or I have, present value of variable growth. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm discounting the first three cash flows, and then once I get into constant, once I get into constant, uh, growth rate scenario, then I take my last value and add it in. So it's a combination of the first two. Again, in later videos, we'll talk a little bit more about each of these methodology. And finally, as a, as a prelude, and again, we'll come back to it, we can look at four other ways to do it. Free cash flow, which is present value of all our free cash flows in the firm, take away any debt that. debt or preferred and divide by shares outstanding. Book value, which is our book value, our actual uh, book value from accounting standpoint, minus our debt over the shares outstanding. 
Another methodology is the liquidation value. Again, these will be all subjects will come back to us further misses. Liquidation value minus debt. That's where we can liquidate the company over shares like then. And the last one is the PE ratio. We take our earnings per share multiplied by PE, which is probably the most used uh, methodology because it's so easy to find. So, for instance, if we want to look at Morgan Stanley today, $31, uh, $32, $32 over the list. It trades at a PE of 16.33 on earnings per share of 1.97. But if we were going to revalue this at $15, we come up with a value that's more like 30. We change our PE. We, we look for a market PE or an industry PE, and then we multiply it by expected earnings per share. So those are a basic look at the seven growth valuation models. As I said in the future, we will absolutely come back to it.